Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. Now we go. Okay, Three Andrew, go. Partners. Hello, everyone. I'll I'll pretend like I just just got here. Um. So, what was I going to say? So, safety. I was hearing from Ashley that safety was a concern. Um. It is super super safe in Cuba. Um. Much more so than the United States, where a lot of our clients come from. Um. They have a zero tolerance. Um. On crimes against. Uh, against tourism. Uh, tourism is a like one of the economic drivers in Cuba that's very, very important for their economy. Um, and it's it's very much protected. So there's not police harassment that happens in some other countries um, where you get kind of shaken down. That's not a thing. Um, violent crime, like theft is not a thing specifically against tourists. You get kind of like double the amount of jail time if that happens and it's literally just because one of the sort of upsides or the benefits of them being in this like socialist as they call it and or communist regime is that they it's just like this collective like everybody's kind of in the same boat so stealing from someone would kind of be breaking that like ideal or that thing and they just they just don't do it it's just not a violent culture it's not a um dangerous place at all at all at all i've not had any i've been Probably a hundred times. I've taken hundreds, if not thousands, of people there. Um, I, I'm pretty sure we've broken the thousand mark. Tons and tons and tons of times to Cuba, and nothing bad has ever happened. The only thing that bad that has ever happened is like someone drinking too much and like falling on cobblestone. That happened, and a girl kind of cut her cheek, but that was her bad for being drunk and on cobblestone. Um, that being said, it is pokey, like as in potholes. Uh, it, like the road being not fixed properly. Um, I was chatting and walking once and like kind of walking backwards with a group. And all of a sudden they're like, wait, wait, wait. And there was like a rebar in the street that was just like there. So there's a lot of like, you have to pay attention to what's happening. Like Cuba itself is full of like spikes, but the Cuban people are not spiky, nor will they like hurt anybody. So that's the first thing. Second thing, election year. Um, we are in an election year and the guy who made waves with Cuba last time, Donald Trump, he does not block the access that we as a company have to Cuba. So he, it was very publicly stated by him that he was going to undo what Obama had done. Obama had opened sort of another path. So I'll back up. There's 12 legal reasons that you can go to Cuba. Obama, there's 11 now. Obama had opened one that was called people to people. Basically, shorthand, it's kind of like you, we go there to meet the Cuban people and they can interact with us so that it, it kind of creates more harmony between the two countries. That was the Obama way, right? Or the Obama sort of like measure. Uh, Trump came in and immediately x that out um, really quickly after he went in office. Was not great for us as a company who takes people to Cuba, takes Americans to Cuba. Um, but our licensing that we've had from the beginning is called uh, support of the Cuban people. So it's our thing is not people to people, but support of the Cuban people. So it's a different category, but it's sort of similar. We're there only operating with companies and paying directly to companies that are not affiliated with the regime, that are not government owned, which is kind of difficult because the government in Cuba owns everything, including tourism. So we work with private sector restaurants drivers they're basically like so, like independent contractors um all of our bed and breakfasts are privately owned all the activities the guides like are not contracted with the the cuban government so the reason that we're able to do it that way we i chose that way initially because i just like a smaller mom and pop boutique hotel i like kind of a boutique vibe more and i like paying you know guides and stuff directly rather than like paying the Cuban government that then pays them like trickle down. I was like, no, dude, I'm just going to pay the people directly. And it ended up working to our benefit because when Trump came in and X to the other way, a lot of Cuban operators like American tour operators going to Cuba didn't survive it because they were doing it the other way of this people to people thing. And then just staying in normal hotels and all that stuff. Ours are all private, privately owned, which keeps us legal. So even if that loudmouth guy does get reelected, um, he pardon it's so loud, though. Even if that guy come, comes back in and gets reelected, there's no chance of us it being illegal to go. We're still able to go with our like our license that we have specifically. So those are those two first things to address. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs>
Those are good ones, right? Those right are good answers. Bud. I love it. I know. Yeah. What's that? I said you're nipping it right in the bud. I love right it. Right in the bud. Mm -hmm. I'm like, he, because he, it's, it, dude, it's, I mean, this is just like how the sausage is made a little bit too much, but we were cranking out trips in the Obama era, right? In like 20, I went there really early on in 2015, right after it had opened. And we started just doing stuff 2017, da, da, da. And as soon as Trump came in, he was like, and Cuba, we're not doing Cuba anymore. I probably called them murderers or something. You know how he likes to do, uh, which they're not. Um, and it really slowed down our progress of things purely from the fact that his reach is bigger than my reach slash like the reach of our small travel brand. And I was like, no, 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 no. You are allowed to come to Cuba. And he's like, you're not allowed to go to Cuba. And you were allowed to go to Cuba. And he was just saying that and him saying it kind of put it into existence, um, unfortunately. So it sort of changed public demand or changed public opinion of it. But we were always still fully able to go and we're going all all through the, the, the Trump years. So yeah, if that if you know, if he comes around again, it's the same thing. He's, he's not a, like there's it's through the Department of Treasury, so it's not even like a thing that the president would. There's no re there's no reason for him to do that. He just kind of likes to make loud pu loud policy, but doesn't like we have licensing that doesn't get affected by that. Cool. And yeah. yeah, and also just for like context, I think Andrew and yeah. I started working together in like 2018. So like yeah. this kind of you know at that time he's talking about that. You were and, there when he was in. Yeah, that's true. I was. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. And, and so you know, I think there's yeah. always this thing with like perceptions that the media gives, and like just Correct. the way American media is delivered as well sometimes yeah. creates that negative perception. But like from an on the ground experiential point of view. Like Cuba is one of the most magical places because you really feel like you're going back in time, you know, like for better or for worse decisions that, that sure. the regime has made has preserved this kind of like historical feel. You don't have Internet all the time, you know, like you yeah. have a lot of old things, but people are like cars and, you know, like even just like the markets and stuff like that. But people are so resilient, resourceful, friendly, yeah. they love Super friendly. with you. Non-anti-American like, too. Yeah, like no, not very, at all. Very like receptive to North Americans, you know, United States citizens meeting them. They're like they, they get hollered like at all the time. Chats. They yeah. want to chat. They're like, "Where are you from?" Like Texas. Oh, Texas. My uncle lives in Texas. They're just like <laughs> down to say hi, and like they're very. There's like this um like friendship kind of component there, right? Did you notice this, Ashley? That they're just like they're just super happy that we're there. Their governments mm -hmm. and our governments have not gotten along for the last 60 years. The normal people don't give a damn about that stuff. They just don't care. Yeah. Yeah. No, they really are like so friendly. And, you know, I think that's one of the magical things about being there is you really get this like hospitality and welcoming and like the yeah. vibrancy, like the art and the music and like just like, I mean, people are like dancing in the streets. You know, I think that one of the things from like kind of a cultural, you know, I think there's a piece of it will be really coming to understand like the politics and like understanding from being on the ground there, I think is mm -hmm. really a transformative thing to kind of see from the Cuban perspective. But then also, you know, there's things that you deal with as a traveler that you're like, it's like noisy and can be hard to sleep at night. And maybe yeah. like, you know, things don't run on time. You know, it's going to be like, we're a little bit late here or it's like a little chaotic. You're getting into your room and like, <laughs> you now have to go over here. And, but that's yeah. also because like, it's very Latin American, but it's also very yeah. Cuban. Like there's these yeah. kind of layers of culture that you start to learn while you're there. And I think it's really great, especially for the type of retreat that Kim leads, because like themes of resilience, like it's such a good place for that because you're having to be culturally resilient. You're having to be like, okay, note to light sleepers, bring some like headphones because yeah. <laughs> it is not really quiet in the streets when we're out in the countryside. But when you're in like Havana, like expects music it's, and it's loud. Yeah. It's yeah. Loud. <laughs> they sell yeah. bread like by yelling bread at like five in the morning they're just big guy behind yeah exactly like why are you doing this right now yeah yeah so, lots of music lots of vibrant it's very vibrant it's very alive um it's a lot it's a lot going on also too to just kind of digest like you were saying, the resiliency thing, like their system has not provided well for them at this point. It's been 60 years and it's like post, uh, there's a lot to get into. Like you'll get into it as you're there a lot. You'll learn a lot of the stuff, but it's been like just like thing after thing after thing that have been very difficult. Um, and they are 
having a good day anyway and they're smiling it's very nice kind of as it's like a nice cultural perspective to be like they are super resilient and are like loving life anyway even with all of these sort of difficulties around or like a shortage of rice that day or a shortage of this or shortage of that there's always things like that kind of going on it doesn't really it's really kind of a nice thing to check in and see that it's like good for the i don't know for a human to like have some gratitude about it about like you know not be not like having rice if you need some rice um but it never affects how they are with us it's not like a it's your american fault like we don't want you here there's not never 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 that kind of sentiment ever in all of the many times i've been there yeah, yeah. totally yeah. and i think I think two areas too to just to mentally prepare for. So one is internet. I I had yeah. a post from when I was there. I was like, so much to say, so little internet. Like it's just <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you have these yeah. little cards, and like Talia will show you the system of how you use them. But just totally. be prepared to be mostly disconnected. I mean, there will be opportunities, but you just can't count yeah. on it. Like, don't yeah. plan a call at five p.m. with your family because like it's no. not going to happen. It, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing is money. Do you want to kind of explain yeah. the cash? So it's way easier since when you and I went, they use oh, the dollar good. now. So you can just bring, so they, you, ba- the basic rule now, it's much more simplified. You just don't, you can bring ATM cards. They just don't work there. So you need to bring American dollars, small build American dollars. They won't have change for a hundred dollar bill. And you're just like stuck with a hundred dollar bill. Um, fives tens maybe maybe 20s tens fives and ones i would bring a hundred ish dollars per day um so what you're there what seven days seven days you're right yeah, so like seven days the 23rd seven eight days yeah seven seven hundred dollars you'll come home with money if you're not buying a lot of souvenirs if you're buying a lot of souvenirs bring more money as in like art costs art can be two to three to $400 are up like for, you know, really big pieces. You're, you'll be going and visiting artists that are like really amazing. So like, uh, they also take weirdly, they'll let you take the art home and then you can like Venmo them later is the thing that's happened on a couple of the more recent trips. Like they have, they're like, yeah, yeah, just take this like $500, like huge piece. And then just like hit me up later when you get back to New York or whatever. Um, so that's cool. Speaking of trusting, um, but y- normal things like, Food, food is very inexpensive. Since when Ashley and I had gone there, there was a thing called a CUC, which was like the Cuban convertible peso. They did away with that. And now they have the national peso. So you'll end up using a little bit of that, but bringing American dollars is the best way because the American dollar is way more valuable now than the CUC was back then. So like fa- like a fancy dinner that we would go to before was probably like 15 or 20 bucks. Now it's like five, six bucks. So like the dollar value went way up because Cubans really like dollars to store them away to be able to either travel or sometimes leave or things like that. So bring us dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And that stuff is in the welcome pack too, but just to like, yeah, yeah, just to kind of reiterate it because you can't like it, you know, here it's, if we're just like, Oh, I'll just use my card or put it on a credit card or use an ATM or whatever. There's just, there's just not bank access. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that the embargo has done. It's just, we can't access money back and forth. Yeah, yeah, and there's not um there aren't like a ton of things that you need money for on the trip. Like yeah. most of the meals are covered. You'll have a handful that aren't. Right. You know, you're you'll want right. tips for like Talia or guide and drivers. Right. But like otherwise, it's not on a day to day basis. You're not spending a lot. It's just True. if you want to bring souvenir, buy souvenirs. You know, yeah. bring things, that's that's where your money and better to have extra and totally. Have- I agree and like. Excuse me. Art art can be pricey and cigars can be pricey. A lot of people are like, "Ooh, I'll get like a night like a box of cigars." They've seen them for a hundred to two to three to four hundred dollars for cigars. I'm not like a cigar aficionado, but they're like they're pretty they're expensive basically. Even in Cuba, in Havana, like at the factory, they're expensive. So that's that's a thing. Yeah. But they are hand rolled, and you'll get to see them. Hand rolled, and they're cool. kind of amazing. And you're allowed to yeah. bring. I think you're allowed to bring back two boxes per person. Also, so you know. They make a lovely gift. And you're going right before December, just saying. Merry yeah. Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Merry, Merry Christmas. There, yep. Just really quickly, Ashley, Vignales you're doing, you're doing, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I would highly recommend also, if people are like wanting to do a little Christmas gift or something, you'll go to a farm in Vignales 
that they hand they literally hand roll them on a farm so you can get like the box kind that are like cohibas or whatever for kind of hundreds of dollars or you can get the same tobacco from the same farm that cohiba is made um from the farmers themselves that roll them and they're like there's no preservatives and chemicals and stuff in them so they're really good and you can buy them direct from farmer which i like which i like that part yeah yeah, yeah. awesome cool yeah. I think we any, covered everything I had in mind. Yeah, I don't know. Cool. Uh, I Sarah, think, any I think it's just, I, I, I think people aren't wrong to be concerned. I think we hear a lot of stuff that's maybe like, oh, that place, like you can't, can't trust it over there. Or the legitimate fear that like Donald Trump will just like bar us from being able to go. Um, but it's fine. I've, I survived it the last four years. Well, we're good. <laughs> we're, we're good. Literally. It's like the, during into in 2018, Ashley and I went yeah. and you can't like, Aside from the hoopla he had made like a year before that, I was like, oh, no, no, we're still going. And everyone's like, oh, okay, great. So like our business still was able to sort of like trudge on and and take people to Cuba. And Cuba remains the same re regardless of who's kind of in power. They even don't have – they had Fidel Castro for almost 50 – like 50 years and then they had Raul. And then those two guys are gone and now they have a new guy. Um, and not that much has changed even in their regime changes. So Cuba's staying, staying Cuba. Yeah. For good or bad. Yeah. Any, if anyone else has questions ever, please send them to Ashley and I can, you know, answer any of those things right away. I'm, I'm, I'm easy. I'm very, I'm very transparent about it also. And like, like, like we were saying the good or the bad it's, it's, it's pokey there and stuff is broken and it will require some patience because it just doesn't function like we're used to things functioning, but there's some like, beauty in the dysfunction it's really 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 cool like how they will fix things and get things moving even though they're there's a huge hole in the road or their engine breaks and they'll fix it really fast or like it's just this the ingenuity and the like perseverance is it's it's something it's really yeah it's really respected by me so yeah there you go there you have it awesome thanks for your time today andrew of course, no problem at all. Check in anytime. Send this video to anybody who has questions. And yeah, if, if there are other follow-up questions, please let me know. For sure. So, awesome. Right. Kim, do you have, have anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, any? Um, oh. Definitely just want to check in with Sarah too and see if there's yeah. anything. I mean, the, uh, the only other points that I'll make, which I think we addressed on the last group call that we did. So sorry right. if it's redundant, but um there have been some comments made online, not from people who are registered, about this idea of like voyeurism of, you know, Americans coming to the country and seeing other people who are suffering and um, how we travel. I know, Ashley, you addressed this. Like we don't just stay at resorts. We are interacting with the culture and the local community. And as the retreat facilitator, I'm happy to hold the space to have these difficult maybe or interesting conversations about what that brings up for us emotionally as we travel and experience this other culture. It's also part of why I partner uh, with this company because it is intentional small group travel. And, um, you know, they're really focused on preserving local culture and being mindful of their footprint and things like that. So uh, just want to address that. And then um, all things logistics for Cuba, I have nothing to do with. I've never been there myself. So <laughs> I, I'm happy to point you back to Ashley. <laughs> um, and um, but in terms of the, you know, I'm happy to be a liaison. And my role with the group is to facilitate the retreat portion of this travel experience. Um, and what we do is, you know, I teach somatic practices that help us connect to our mind, body and spirit. And we set time aside as we're traveling to see what's coming up for us, you know, emotionally, spiritually, physically, all of that. We take an inventory of our life, what direction it's going in and see how we might want to pivot that going forward together as a group of women traveling without any other distractions in our life, jobs, kids, whatever. Um, a lot of people who sign up for these retreats do come at a pivotal moment in their life, like that something's got to change or I'm now retired and now what, or I'm changing careers or something like that. So that always is kind of an element too. Um, 
integrate in the retreat portion of the trip. So just want to clarify my role, you know, anything to do with registration, money, logistics of Cuba, airport transfer, not me, but anything to do with the retreat aspect <laughs> of the programming. I'm mm -hmm. happy, you know, I've touched base with everybody who's signed up so far um, and or you've known me from my past, you know, work or events or something like that. But um, if you're watching this and we haven't met, I'm always happy to make that connection. Awesome. Thank you. Sarah, do you have anything that you'd like to ask? No, I mean, I'm, I trust Kim entirely. And if she selected your organization to take us there, then I trust you entirely. I'm not concerned about safety. Um, I've read the welcome packet. I've booked my flights. I purchased my insurance. Let's go. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, we really appreciate our uh, partnership with Kim. She's been amazing. Loved seeing everyone's experiences on retreats. Um, you know, Kim has been really instrumental also for us because our retreats in the past have been yoga retreats, Pilates retreats, you know, more movement-based mm -hmm. retreats. So I love that we're opening it up in this way, you know, with Kim, with somatic work, with personal development and growth, because we have a lot of people doing amazing things. And, you know, you need that time to like, look into yourself and put yourself in another context for that next level of growth. And I think that Kim does a really amazing job of facilitating that. So he sure does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Thanks. Awesome. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a good day. All right. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. the recording. Awesome. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Andrea, let me.